served as a pastor for 11 years in St. Patrick's and St. Margaret Mary, right, Father Rick? Yes, 11 years. Mm -hmm. And that was that your first time to serve both parishes at the same time? or? It was the first time that I was pastoring two parishes yeah. at the same time. Mm -hmm. Because I had been the pastor of the cathedral parish and ran the operation there and been director of liturgy, for the archdiocese, I was used to juggling a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. So taking on two parishes, um, I did not find to be uh, impossible. Mm -hmm. um, challenge, yes, but not scary challenge, yeah. just a few unknowns. And I said, well, we'll, we'll do it. That was, that was something to be able to have a parish with a school and then the other parish not having a school. Mm -hmm. um, and they are two very different parishes in terms of just so many levels, Culture. uh, mm -hmm. cultures and um, their, their approach to um, who is church and how is church mm -hmm. and uh, the style of the worship spaces are very different. But my work with the Office of Worship for so many years of helping to dedicate new buildings, rededicate buildings, go in to help um, bury pastors mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, I'd worked in so many different worship spaces. I knew they could all, we could, they all work. Mm -hmm. You just have to say they're different. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. you pray mm -hmm. in, the, in the space you're in. Well, I enjoyed St. Margaret Mary because of its, the building, because of its warmth. Even when it was cloudy, the stone in the room and the way it was set up was just a warm room. And when you turn the lights on, it just popped warmth. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed um, having served in other parishes where I had people on three sides. Mm -hmm. I'd already experienced that, mm -hmm. uh, so that wasn't... The movement okay. back and forth, that wasn't something new. Mm -hmm. um, the closeness of everybody uh -huh. because of the way it's set up, I, I enjoyed that. The people of St. Margaret Mary are just genuine, good folks. Um, very diverse, um, then that is on so many different levels. The diversity was, I found it intriguing. And I enjoyed it a great deal. I come from a diverse background. I've served with so many different um, people um, in the archdiocese. And so I just enjoyed it. I, I found the people um, longing for being spiritually fed and um, willing to walk together. My first effort was just to love them. Mm -hmm. Uh, take people in the situation where it was, allow them to talk about it, mm -hmm. allow them to uh, voice their, their concerns, their disappointments, the joys they've had in the past, um, and to listen. My first year there, I did a lot of listening mm -hmm. because I just needed to know how was everybody doing? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, I knew Father Joe from when I was a deacon, mm -hmm. Father Joe Kern, and um, so I felt really good to have him there present. Yeah. Um, I had known Father Ron since I was a kid because we came from the same parish. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I knew he was hurting. I knew the, the folks in the parish were hurting. Uh, but at the same time, it's like we have to move forward. Mm -hmm. But let's do it by paying attention to where we're at, mm -hmm. how we're feeling now, and knowing that this is a process. And so I just let the process take place. Mm -hmm. I remember feeling excited, mm -hmm. nervous, because I wanted to do it well in a space that I was not used to. Mm -hmm. um, I knew that there was an eagerness among the people. Um, uh, I think I laughed halfway through the thing the mass, just because that's how I take care of some of my stress. I, I, I say silly things and uh -huh. I laugh at things. And um, I just remember being very warmly received mm -hmm. and enjoying being able to celebrate Eucharist with the uh, people there. 
Well, first of all, it was time for chaos because he was <laughs> unpacking boxes and um, actually I, I didn't get unpacked too much because um, Mary and Carl Sullivan's son had just died. Mm. And so one of the first things that Father Joe Kern and I worked on together was his funeral. funeral. So uh, the first day was really focused on ministry, the first two or three days. Mm -hmm. So not much got unpacked. Mm -hmm. And um, I just trusted Jerry and Jeannie and everybody else, do your jobs, because I, I'm swimming upstream here. Uh -huh. So that's what I remember. It's just like, oh boy. <laughs> I knew it was going to be a learning curve mm -hmm. uh, of how does this place work? How does, how do, what are the, uh, what are the protocols? What are the, the way we do things here? What is the, the present feeling? Mm -hmm. um, how's the staff doing? So I just kind of settled in and just tried to walk with. You have a great deal of the same staff, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. although some, Jeannie's now over at St. Patrick's. Patrick's. Mm -hmm. um, and um, what's the name of the current secretary? Um, Melissa. Melissa, thank yeah. you. I knew it began with an M. Mm -hmm. Melissa was hired while I was there, but it was a brief period when, I, when we were there together. Mm -hmm. um, Jerry, I've known since my time as a young priest at Little Flower, which is just a mile and a half from here. From here uh -huh. um, and that's when he was teaching at Cecina. Mm -hmm. So he, he was a known, somewhat known quantity. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, his, his humor is, is different. So you have to get ready for that. <laughs> and, and um, his, his view of things uh, isn't always um, middle of the road. You know, it can veer off to the left a bit. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Um, Jeannie was very easy to work with. Um, she was working very hard to, to please mm -hmm. and to um, make my life a little easier. Yeah. Donna McDaniel as the lead musician was just stellar. Mm -hmm. um, and then Bob, the handy guy, uh -huh. um, he was Bob, quiet, just did his job. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. it worked out really well. Th There's so many memories. Uh -huh. Let's just, the liturgies at St. Margaret Mary, I always enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um, whatever season it was, um, whatever occasion it was. Mm -hmm. um, I think the first time I did a baptism in Spanish was oh. quite a quite a memory for me, uh, and then to be able to preside and preach um, with a lot of help mm -hmm. um, for that community was really good. Simbanga Beast was always a, a, a fun moment for me because uh, it was immersing myself for a short period of time in a, in a culture uh, very different from our white Anglo-Saxon, uh -huh. Midwest, mm -hmm. you know, kind of serious, uh -huh. um, and, and the sense of uh, just joy. Mm -hmm. um, another memory uh, that's really strong is our ability to um, do the Legacy for Our Mission campaign mm -hmm. and recreate uh, the uh, Parish Center, the lower mm -hmm. level, uh -huh. the, legacy uh, the legacy room. Mm -hmm. um, that was a great joy for me to be able to do with the people and to see that now they have it for the years yeah. ahead. Mm -hmm. um, parish picnic was always fun. Mm -hmm. No, the diocese uh, d did not say you have to do this mm -hmm. and so. Um, with the uh, Filipino community, that was what do you do? How do you do it? When do you do it? Mm -hmm. You know, the Wednesday night dinners yeah. on the first Wednesday the night. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, Simbanga mm -hmm. um giving it a special moment mm -hmm. was important. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, it gets lost. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think the wonder of that was we started getting bigger and bigger. Well, bigger and bigger, but 
more people would come to it who weren't Filipino just to enjoy the celebration. Yeah, yeah. And the mm-hmm. food and the dancing yeah. and the music and um, they really enjoyed the liturgy. Yeah. Um, so that was, uh, 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 that just grew out of yeah. what was already there. Right, and yeah. I, if I was living in a country where where I was not born and the language was basically different, mm-hmm. I would want to find some place where I could pray in my native tongue mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. sing in my native songs. Um, uh, I would enjoy the diversity mm-hmm. of wherever I was, mm-hmm. but I know that yeah. ha- having a uh, concelebrated mass in South Korea uh-huh. with... Uh, Pope John Paul II and one of his cardinals at another mass while I was there in 1989. I had to revert to English. Uh-huh. Um, I, I had to stay with the language. So that gave me a touch when people say, I really wish I could pray in my own language. Mm-hmm. And that helped me to, I, I found the Hispanic mm-hmm. community there mm-hmm. and uh, there had been something before, mm-hmm. years before, but but um, myself and um, well, and Friar Mark, especially when he came, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. um, then um, Father Martin and, and Father Matthew and now Father Ron, mm-hmm. and to give those folks in the Hispanic community the chance to pray in their own language. Mm-hmm. Um, was just so important to them mm-hmm. and having ex- been exposed to it mm-hmm. that the, how we really do pray most in what we learned from yeah. the beginning mm-hmm. um, that that was just an important thing to do and the mm-hmm. fact that we had the enough people there and enough priests to make that happen mm-hmm. uh, and continue to make it happen okay. mm-hmm. um, that was excellent the Spanish community can speak, I mean, we can speak in behalf of them that they're also very grateful for that, you know, because they're able to practice their own, like, traditions, right. and celebration, like, even the altar of the, uh, the, the, yeah, altar the, of the dead. Yeah, the altar of the dead uh, the, during November, and then you've got uh, the Lady Cin- Guadalupe, Guadalupe mm-hmm. Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo, yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and for them, is, and they've grown bigger. I mean, they've also they have a lot more like the music has they mo- they have more people that are engaged now. Good. And they're recruiting more you know, like Spanish people that to attend the mass. Good. Which is good. Really good. So, and with that, we I mean it has become like our identity for the parish that we are multicultural and diverse because of all the other celebrations that we celebrate in the church. The few times while I was there that we could have the Filipino, the Hispanic, and the Anglo communities at a liturgy together or at a celebration mm-hmm. together, that was always, uh, it touched my heart because it's like, we're, we're just human beings and we're all Catholics and uh, mm-hmm. let's just do what we can do together and what we do separately mm-hmm. doesn't mean we're separated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, it's usually around the Feast of St. Margaret Mary, wherein they have the multilingual, right. like, different, and then, and it's, that was make the St. Margaret Mary unique and with other parishes, because we have more distinct celebrations right, compared right. to the other parish, I mean, other parishes in the, in the community. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, so we would like to thank you for that. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> and then you are also very big on ecumenism. Very. Like, yeah, so, yeah. I know in your articles in the Criterion also you like more of like different, you know, re- different religion praising and, you know, I mean, uniting, you know, doing worship together. Because I remember there was like some events were in, you know, you, we get to sing with the Baptist or the, right. when you were in the, when you were the pastor of the parish. I think that's very important for us to move towards, for Christians to move towards uh, mm-hmm. unity. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know how that's going to look, mm-hmm. but like Pope Francis says, um, unity is a process, not a destination. Mm-hmm. We don't know what it's going to look like, so don't try to fashion it before we even get there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With the other religions, um, 
that's the unity of humanity seeking God. Mm -hmm. And for us to acknowledge that we are all seeking God, we just do it differently. Mm -hmm. um, it's not right or wrong, mm -hmm. as it has been too often pointed in the past. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one way or no way. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't make them all the same, definitely not all the same, and they're not all equal in terms of their... Um, their teachings, but there are great similarities with other religions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, especially social justice, mm -hmm. especially uh, care for the poor, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, tolerance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even though every religion has at times its moments where it's not very tolerant, but that's not what they're supposed to be. I think my first struggle as pastor was not about Margaret Mary or St. Patrick, it was being schizophrenic. <laughs> you know, when you go from the one community to the other, I had uh -huh. two and a half miles of city streets uh -huh. to, you know, think this is where I'm going, this is who I'm going to be with, and this is what this place is like. Yeah. Um, I think that was the first challenge. Mm -hmm. And uh, it worked out well because once people realized I was there to pastor, period, uh -huh. not, well, we have to share you with somebody, but yeah. once they got used to that, it made it very easy mm -hmm. uh, for me to be able to just be who I was. And what are the traditions here? How do we do things here? Mm -hmm. You know, what is the cultural makeup, etc.? cetera? Uh, that made the the challenge was always there, uh, but it didn't affect me negatively. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the biggest challenge uh, that for any pastor today is the fact that we carry on our shoulders so much more than what we were ordained to do. Uh -huh. yeah. So you know, we were ordained to. Uh, be present to people's needs, to um, be uh, a consoler, um, to be uh, uh, the one who brings the sacramental life to life mm -hmm. in a parish mm -hmm. and among, in people's lives, mm -hmm. to uh, teach the gospel, to preach it, um, to live it. But then you add on buildings, grounds, yeah. You know, uh, the uh, the struggle to maintain right. um, the finances mm -hmm. and the ministries mm -hmm. and, uh, <clears throat> yeah. you know, you become a human resources mm -hmm. person. You're mm -hmm. the boss. Um, You've got so many hats to So many hats. And then, then in our, uh, you're part of a deanery. Mm -hmm. And in Terre Haute, you're also part of a city and a county. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there were relationships to be had with the local officials, yes, with uh -huh. the other pastors. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So that can be challenging. Very challenging mm -hmm. because you're juggling a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been blessed to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I will tell you, as I get older, <laughs> it's more tiring. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, I wasn't told. You weren't told. No. 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 I was invited to consider ah, okay. a change. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I was shocked. Mm -hmm. Although I had gone to see Archbishop Tobin just two months earlier mm -hmm. to say, okay, I'm in my 11th year. I've got one more year in my term. Um, I know, I, I said, I think it's right for you to know what I'm thinking ahead of time. Mm -hmm. um, so I told him that, I'm perfectly willing to stay in Terre Haute to finish out my next year, and if there's something else, you know, that would be fine. Mm -hmm. um, if he wants me to stay on there till I turn 70, that would be fine. Mm -hmm. I said, but if something else comes up <coughs> that you want me to consider, just know that you can come and talk, and mm -hmm. I'll, I'll listen and see. Mm -hmm. Well, two months later, <laughs> I'm in his office, and he starts off, telling me about the personnel board and I'm going, oh boy, 
And then he tells me uh, what the situation is here mm -hmm. at Our Lady of Lourdes. Mm -hmm. And as he described their needs, all as I could see was, here's this skill, this skill, this skill that I have in my experience. And I went, oh my goodness. It fits. <laughs> it fits. So there was wisdom there. Uh -huh. So I didn't say yes right away. Mm -hmm. I said, I need about three weeks to pray, right. pray over this mm -hmm. and to think about it. I need to talk to, to some of my close friends, family. Um, I'd never make these decisions without that kind of input. Mm -hmm. So that's, it was ultimately, it was the Archbishop's request. It was my yes. It was not easy because I had expected at least one more year. One more year. And I was working hard to prepare the parishes for that mm -hmm. so that all of the, the loose strings were kind of tied up before mm -hmm. I left. Mm -hmm. So the last um, few months there was like a lot of quicking, tying up. Um, but I knew things were in good shape. Mm -hmm. you know, there were some things we never got around to, but you never get around to everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's very hard to move. Mm -hmm. uh, as a pastor, I've been blessed to be invited to love people mm -hmm. and to make that decision to do it and then follow through mm -hmm. to become involved in their lives, um, the local community. Um, allow them to get to know me, my family, mm -hmm. and um, when you come, when it comes time to walk away from that, that's really hard. Mm -hmm. But it, I'm I never felt I was running away. I was always walking into towards, something new. Towards, yeah. mm -hmm. There's always something positive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I don't mind saying St. Margaret Mary St. Patrick's. I was yeah. pastor of both for, okay. for 11 years. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I miss the, uh, the tightness of the community. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I found that here at Lourdes and on the east side. The inside of Indianapolis is very unique. Mm -hmm. um, Catholics on the east side are all interrelated. Mm -hmm. They, their ancestors started at Holy Cross and St. Philip's and marched the East. And as they okay. did, you know, th they know each other from playing sports against each other in the Catholic schools, yeah. from going to Cecina and Cathedral. And um, they're just tight like okay. this. Mm -hmm. So I, I was blessed to find that again mm -hmm. here. And this is an historic district that, mm -hmm. in which this place sits. So. Mm -hmm. Um, it's got a life of its own in that sense. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was the, the tightness, the smaller city community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, having Rose Holman, ISU, St. Mary of the Woods, um, two really good hospitals, mm -hmm. a lot of good physicians and... Um, the services that were there. Um, just around the corner. Just around the corner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I do miss, uh, just to get to my doctor here, it's 21.2 miles. Uh -huh. <laughs> Which is okay, uh -huh. and it's easy to do with the interstates, but um, it's not like when I would just drive two and a half miles and I was there. <laughs> so. One of the things you, you lose, you lose the smaller size. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the um, somewhat of the homier feeling. Um, but the nice thing about that I like about Our Lady of Lourdes is it's, it's homey. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's, yeah, it's, it's warm. Mm -hmm. Now, ironically, my coming here also was I followed a pastor who sadly died mm -hmm. in his first year here who was bringing two parishes together back into one. Um. The neighboring parish of St. Bernadette, mm -hmm. which was in the sense similar to, in some ways to mm -hmm. St. Margaret Mary, mm -hmm. um, 
it, it was closed through the uh, connected in the spirit process. Mm -hmm. And so when I arrived, I had, they were still in process. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a little different than pastoring two. Mm -hmm. I was in a sense pastoring one mm -hmm. that really wasn't one yet. Uh, but now it is. Mm -hmm. But it's it's really more about the people accepting reality mm -hmm. and, and being thankful for what they can continue mm -hmm. um, than anything else. Mm -hmm. And the people who did come over from St. Bernadette brought a number of things with them mm -hmm. uh, in terms of things that they've done. Mm -hmm. So Lourdes has always had a Thanksgiving meal for whoever needed a Thanksgiving meal. Uh, Bernadette had a Christmas Day meal. Mm. We do both of them now. No. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's just one example of they brought, we Very this nice group culture. here had, yeah. and together we've come up with come up with this is who we are. Mm -hmm. So I think we're pretty well getting there. We must be because we're having a capital campaign right now. Well, I hope St. Mark and Mary remains um, a multicultural. Uh, uh, destination for folks in Terre Haute. Mm -hmm. um, I, I hope it uh, is able to remain um, its warm self um, and that it um, continues to what every parish has to do re-envision itself going forward mm -hmm. not saying oh this is what we've been but it's all where we're yeah, going to be stagnate no yeah, you got you got to keep evolve. find mm -hmm. okay lord where are you leading us now mm -hmm. what's the next step mm -hmm. um what does the larger community need from us what is the uh our partnership with saint patrick's mm -hmm. um what does that mean for us and mm -hmm. for them mm -hmm. uh, i mean we made a lot of strides in that area mm -hmm. uh over 11 years you know, the first thing that united them was me. Yeah. Uh, when I was a big question mark when I arrived there mm -hmm. for people, is this really going to work? Mm -hmm. But by the time I left, you know, we shared staff, we shared a bulletin. You know, we had times together where we were doing things it's together, yeah. and we mm -hmm. had times where we were doing our separate realities. So mm -hmm. um, it can work if people are willing to make it work. Okay. And I would hope that, that that would be one of my hopes that that good relationship continues. What is your message for the congregation of St. Margaret Mary? 100 years down, <laughs> another 100 to go. <laughs> Be faithful. Be, fa <laughs> Be faithful. <laughs>